Do you like shiny hunting, nuzlocks, Pokemon challenges, and other Nintendo content like Mario Kart and Fire Emblem? Well, if you do, then you should follow me on Twitch, where I stream a lot of Pokemon content and Nintendo content, we have a really fun time. I go live on there a lot, and it would be really cool to see you guys there. Link is in the description below. We also have a community Discord server, so you guys should go check that out, too. Link is also in the description for that. Welcome back to Hoenn. After almost two years of the best team for Hoenn's release, here we are again for another trip around this tropical paradise. Last time we decided on Swampert as our best starter. Today we are making a team revolving around Blaziken, the supposed real best starter according to Ariza and a lot of you guys. Personally, my opinion still stands of Swampert being the best, but I'm not going to say that Blaziken is the worst. Honestly, it's a firefighting type and it decimates in Hoenn, so if you want to count this as the best starter, that is completely up to you because it is now getting a team anyways. I'll be honest with you guys though, making all these best teams by yourself can get really exhausting, so I finally decided to bring someone on. Say what's up. What's up guys, my name is Monkeys, and today I'm here to help out Mystic in deciding what the best team would be in Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire with Blaziken as their starter. As always, the goal of this project is to make the best team possible revolving around the said choice starter. Each of these six Pokemon help out Blaziken in doing the best against the gym leaders, elite four members, rivals, and evil teams being Team Magma and Aqua. In making this team, we decided not to use version exclusive Pokemon because that was just a big mess, so you will be able to use this team in both versions. Like the usual routine, we are also not going to be using tutor moves, egg moves, and all Pokemon will be obtainable in the main story. However, the move relearner is completely okay to use. One more big important factor is that we will not be using trade evolution Pokemon, so you guys that don't have any friends or don't have a second console can use this team. And Mystic and I also did a top 5 video on my channel. Be sure to check it out after watching this one. The link is in the description below. Alright, monkeys explain what's going down, let's hop into it. Starting off, we have our starter, as the title indicates, being Blaziken. Blaziken was the runner-up from being the best starter in Auras, and to be honest, it's actually very good. Fire and Fighting is the legendary trademark of Pokemon starter types, the type everyone wanted to stop. Well, with Blaziken, it was the starter of this type that actually started it all, and actually does well on its own journey. It has a base speed stat of 80 and a whopping 120 in physical attack, and also 110 in special attack. For a starter Pokemon, these stats are absolutely magnificent, even with its Blaze ability. Speed boost is obviously the best for Blaziken, but this ability is actually still pretty decent. The only downside about Blaziken is I don't see its fire typing being all that useful, but its typing of fighting is actually decent, doing well against gym leaders like Norman. Its fighting move arsenal is also decent too, as I will explain when I cover its moveset. Blaziken's moveset I think is pretty typical for anyone using it on their Hoenn journey. We've chosen the moves Blaze Kick for obvious stab, Low Sweep for fighting stab, Bulk Up because stat boosting is good, and we also chose Earthquake for coverage. Until you get access to Low Sweep in the Mobville City Mart, use Double Kick as it's pretty good on Combuskin for the time being. Bulk Up can be obtained after defeating Brawly, and it's good for setups, especially against more powerful opponents. It may even help against Norman because of its defense enhancing. Earthquake is spent in Sea Ford Cavern towards the end. Other move options are Rock Tomb for flying types, and it could be good for Blaziken to have it until Earthquake is obtained. Peck can also be used against Brawly, and be sure to evolve Torchic into Combuskin before taking on Roxanne, because this will be the only Pokemon on your team at this point that can take on Roxanne safely. With this moveset, it is great against Roxanne, Brawly if you want Peck, Watson Magneton line, Norman's team, Sydney's team, Glacia, most of Steven's team, Maze Cargo and Breloom, Wally's Delcaddy and Roselia, Archie's Mightyena and Sharpedo, and Maxie's Mightyena. Next up, you're going to want to head west of Oldale Town to Route 102, where you're going to catch your second Pokemon, Ralts. Ralts was in the original best team for Hoenn, and it's making a return because Gardevoir is just that good. Ralts may be annoying to catch as there's only a 4% chance of encountering it in the wild, but it'll be well worth it once you finally evolve it into a Gardevoir. Gardevoir, unlike before, is now a Psychic and Fairy type, and it plays a great role in being a check for Blaziken's Psychic type weakness. Not only does Gardevoir have a great typing, but it has some great stats to go along with it. Gardevoir has an amazing 125 special attack, 115 special defense and a decent speed stat being 80. It is also a very versatile Pokemon as it possesses an extremely wide move pool and can be given lots of coverage moves through the use of TMs. For our final move set for Gardevoir, we decided to go with Psychic, Calm Mind, Dazzling Gleam, and Magical Leaf. Psychic and Calm Mind are level up moves that are learned at levels 31 and 26 respectively. Dazzling Gleam can be learned through the use of TM as it is found on Route 123 as a gift from the little girl east of the Berry Master's house. However, if you don't want to go through the trouble of finding this move, your second best option is Draining Kiss, a level up move learned at level 23. But if you do feel like going the extra mile and doing even more work, you can try your luck at getting hard skills from Rock Smash and relearning the move Moonblast from the Relearner in Fall Arbor Town. However, there is no guarantee 
that you'd get a heart skill from Rock Smash, and it just seems like too much work for me. Our final move, Magic Leaf, is learned at level 17, and it's just a basic coverage move. But our main focus for using this would be on your rival's Marsh Stomp. At the point in the game when you first face their Marsh Stomp, you won't really have a good counter for it, so this is really your best option. Gardevoir helps out against many of the important battles in the game. For one, Brawly gets absolutely destroyed by Ralts as it quad resists his fighting type moves and can get easy KOs with confusion. Gardevoir also helps out a ton against many of the team Magma and Aqua Grunts as their common Pokemon include Poochiana, Zubat, Golbat, Grimer, Muck, Coughing and Weezing. Gardevoir also performs really well against Archie and Maxi, against both of their Mightyena, Crobats, Maxi's Weezing, and Archie's Muck. And like I said earlier, Gardevoir is our only real answer for Maze Swampert, as Magic Leaf can hit for 4 times super effective damage. However, for our other rival Wally, Gardevoir can take on his Altaria, Roselia, and even his ace, Mega Galley. Gardevoir also single handedly destroys Drake's team as it can't be hit by any Dragon type moves and it just decimates them with Dazzling Gleam. I keep on telling you guys, this Pokemon is one of the best flyers in any of the games past the physical and special split. Crobat, welcome home, buddy. I always mention why Crobat is one of the best flyers in any of the Pokemon games it's in, and I'm always right. It's got a great move pull, and it's a very early game flyer that pretty much everyone has access to. You can literally capture Zubat right before you face off against Brawly in Granite Cave. The unfortunate part about Zubat is that in the very beginning it sucks and you have to level it up to 13 in order for it to get wing attack, but level 13 isn't that bad considering you can get a Zubat anywhere from levels 9 to 12. 4 levels isn't the the worst. Crobat is great stat-wise, having 90 base physical attack and having a base speed of 130. Swallow is good, but it's only really viable with guts in my opinion, plus it gets shut down late game easily. Skarmory lacks physical flying attacks as most of its level moves are special. Pelipper is just god awful. Now some of you may argue that you may not need a flyer because of the Eon Flute, and you're pretty much right, although you don't get it towards the very end of the game. Flying through Hoenn can get very tedious, especially with how many times you have to fly during the drought or drizzle scenes, so I will say you need a flyer, and then after after you get the Eon Flute, you can ditch Fly and Crobat. So yeah, Crobat is great, let's enjoy it being back again. Crobat's moveset is semi-comparable to its original moveset. We changed one thing and personally we think it's for the best. We decided to give Crobat Fly, Cross Poison, Steel Wing, and Shadow Ball. Fly because of obvious reasons. You can use Wing Attack until you get Fly though. Cross Poison you get via Move Alerting with the Heart Skill, and that can be obtained right outside of Mauville City on Route 119 before you get the Surf HM. Steel Wing you get from Steven in Granite Cave, and it's for those pesky rock types. We replaced Roost for Shadow Ball because Roost is kind of a waste to have because of potions. Shadow Ball can be obtained in Mount Pyre towards the late floor. Crobat with these moves does well against Brawly, the rival's Breloom line, Wally's Roselia and Gallade, Sydney's Grass types, and Phoebe's team. Honestly though, Crobat may not do super well against all these important battles, but it's the best flyer for a Hoenn playthrough, that's why it's here. Our next Pokemon is going to appear a bit later on after you defeat the second gym and complete all the events in Slateport. This Pokemon is also reappearing from the original best team for Hoenn. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you my Nectric. After you complete the events of Slateport, you're going to want to head north of the city to Route 110, where you're going to catch an Electric. At this point in the game, we realize that our team has a weakness to flying type with no real counters, so we decided that we needed an Electric type. Sure, there's a free Pikachu you get after completing a contest in Slateport, but unfortunately we can't evolve it into Raichu. So so, we decided to go with the better option. I mean, come on, it was on the original best team for Hoenn. Why wouldn't it reappear? Maynectric being a pure electric type has some pretty good stats. It's got a decent 105 in special attack, but it shines in the speed category with a base 105 speed, making it one of the fastest Pokemon obtainable in these games. Its level up move pool only consists of electric, dark, and normal type attacks, and it can't really learn all that many TMs, so its moveset isn't going to be the best thing in the world. For our moveset on Manectric, we decided to go with Thunderbolt, Flamethrower, Volt Switch, and Double Team. Thunderbolt is a TM that is given to you by Watson, though it's not right after the gym battle. In order to get this TM, you're going to have to complete the new Mauville, and once you do that, you can return to Watson in Mauville City and claim the TM. However, if you don't want to go through the trouble of completing new Mauville, your second best option is Discharge, which is available through level up at level 30. Our next move is going to be Flamethrower, and it's another TM that is available on B1F of Victory Road. If you're not willing to wait that long, your second best option is Overheat, which is a TM that's available after defeating Flannery. Volt Switch is given to you after defeating Watson, and Double Team is essentially just a filler move that can be learned through TM that is available on Route 113. If you don't like Double Team, a second option you have is Hidden Power. This is of course a TM obtained from an Elder in Fortress City, and the typing of your Manectrix Hidden Power can be told to you by another Elder in the same house in Fortress City. In terms of importance in battle, Manectric doesn't perform as well as many of the other Pokemon on this team, but still helps us out nonetheless. Against Mei, it's really only useful for taking on her Swallow, but that's about it. Sure, it can hit her Balloon 
for super effective damage, but that's really Blaziken's job. The same can also be said for Wally, as Flamethrower is super effective against his Magneton and Roselia, but Blaziken is just better suited for taking them on. My Nectric's abilities really shine against Winona and Wallace, as Winona's flying types are no match for Thunderbolt or Volt Switch. The same can be said about a majority of Wallace's Pokemon except for his Whizcash. Other than that, all of his Pokemon fall to Manectric. Manectric also helps out against Team Magma and Aqua's Zubats, along with Maxi and Archie's Crobats. For a majority of the game, Manectric isn't a ton of help, but really comes through when you need him to. Oh yeah, and there's also the potential to Mega Evolve him, as the Manectite can be found on the Cycling Road. So far on this list, we have had nothing but old members in the best team for Hoenn. Well, finally for the fifth spot, we have a new member. Welcome, Azumarill. Azumarill is definitely a strange pick to most of you, but I don't know if you guys knew this, but Azumarill actually gets the ability Huge Power, and it's not a hidden ability. Huge Power increases the attack stat by a landslide, and it's not even Azuma's hidden ability. You can capture a Meryl right next to Marvel City on the left side in the tall grass. It may take you a while to find, but I don't think it'll be that long. One thing I love that Azumarill has over other water Pokemon is its fairy typing. With its fairy typing, it's just become universally better, stacking up against fighting and dark Pokemon. Adding the fairy typing to it just makes it a lot more viable in-game and even in the competitive scene. It also gets physical water attacks relatively early and it gets play ref at level 25. Gyarados is nice and so is Sharpedo, but I guess I dislike Azumarill more because of its type and it having access to physical water attacks earlier than Gyarados. Sharpedo is also another option if you want fast surfing, but I just think Azumarill's better. For a moveset on Azumarill, I think it's easy to say that it's going to be our designated diver and surfer, so we're going to give it Surf, Dive, and Play Rough for our Fairy Stab. Until you get Surf, you can have Azumarill use Aqua Tail, which can be learned at level 21. Next up is Dive, which you can get rid of after the Legendary Pokemon events, as you don't need it anymore for the main story. A move you can replace Dive with is Super Power, which Azuma can learn at level 46. I'm pretty sure Azuma would be at level 46 by then. If not, just farm a Love Disk and move learn it. It's not that hard to do. Another move that can replace both of those moves is actually Waterfall. And Waterfall, I actually think, is better because it's easier to obtain. And on top of that, too, Azumarill is a physical water chip. Champion. Bulldoze can be obtained in the Marvel Mart, and it's good for Steel types if need be. Play Rough can be learned at level 25, and the fact you get a move that powerful and stab in the early game is one of the reasons why it's here on the best team. With all these moves in mind, Azumarill does well against Flannery, Tate and Liza, Sydney's Dark types that aren't Grass types, Drake's team, the rivals Mag Cargo, Wally's Gallade and Altaria, Maxi and Archie's Mightyena, and also Maxi's Camera. Enjoy this new team member, it's adorable and very powerful. Finally, the sixth team member. What else do we need? We have a starter. A flyer, a surfer, a diver, what could we possibly use? Well, we decided that we needed a great role player Pokemon that can be found relatively easy, and that was Absol. We realized that we now have two Pokemon weak to psychic types and nothing can hit them for super effective stab damage. Absol can be found on Route 120 right below Mount Chimney. It has a decent base stat total with a huge base 130 attack stat, but its other stat categories are somewhat lackluster, being 75 or lower. With that being said, with his very wide and diverse move pool, it's clear to see that Absol can really pack a punch. For Absol, we decided to go with a final move set of Night Slash, Flamethrower, Aerial Ace, and X Scissor. Night Slash is his best stab attack and can be learned through level up at level 29. Flamethrower is a TM that can be found in Victory Road, however if you don't feel like waiting that long, you can always pick up Fire Blast at the Lily Cove department store if you have enough money. Aerial Ace is another coverage move that never misses, you can't really go wrong with it. This can be found at the Marvel City Pokemart for only 10,000 Pokedal. And his final move, X Scissor, is another very good coverage move that can be taught as a TM and found at the top of the waterfall after exiting Victory Road. We're sorry that 3 out of 4 of his moves are TMs, but if you really don't want to go out of your way to get them, some substitutions are Psycho Cut and Sucker Punch. Both are level up moves that are learned at levels 37 and 45 respectively. Like I said earlier, Absol is kind of just a filler Pokemon on this team. His main role is to just lessen the psychic type weakness of some of our Pokemon. However, upon further inspection, Absol does a lot more than just that. Absol really helps us in two major battles, with the first being against Phoebe. Absol with his moveset and typing can single-handedly take down every single Pokemon that Phoebe has to throw at you. Her ghost types are no match for Absol's base 130 attack and Night Slash. The other major battle it helps out in is against Tate and Lisa. They have a Soul Rock and Lunatone that are no competition for Absol. Absol also has the ability to Mega Evolve, and you could find the Absolite in the West Zone of the Safari Zone. Mega Absol gets a huge buff in his stats and can actually proved to be a very useful team member.
Well, that pretty much wraps up this best team for Hoenn Blaziken Edition. Next up is Sceptile, and I really don't know what I'm going to be doing for that one. We shall see soon enough, though. As for this best team, though, I hope you guys did enjoy it and hope it brings some fun into your Auras journey. We did a video over on Monkey's Channel 2 where we talked about the top 5 Hoenn Pokemon we feel should get Mega Evolutions, so you should definitely go check that out in the iCard and in the description. If you enjoyed the video, why not leave a like and subscribe to my channel with notifications on, that way you never miss an upload. If you want to support me further, consider following my Twitch where I stream a lot of Pokemon content and Nintendo content like Shiny hunting, showdown battles, Pokemon Mr. Dungeon Explorers of Sky's speedruns, Zelda, and even Fire Emblem content. So if you guys come down and support, I would love that a lot. Want to support me further, further, and gain cool perks? Check out my Patreon. Fly Jubilee, Dan Leone, Lady Crimson, Derby Poster, and Jarrett Ruiz Austin did, and I wanted to thank them personally for going above and beyond. It means the world to me. I think I'm wrapping this up, though. I'm Mystic Umbreon, and I will see you in the future for more awesome Pokemon content.